Everybody, it's Chris from the Evermore Podcast, your Newcastle United Podcast, and Evermore YouTube channel. As you can see, I'm flying solo tonight. We've had a few bits and bobs going on this week with the club, so we just thought we'd jump on and, and do a quick video. Um, we were going to do a special, actually, but it's been rearranged to next week, so definitely make sure you check that one out next week, guys, because it's well worth the wait. We've got a special guest coming on, uh, somebody who's quite familiar to, to a lot of Newcastle fans, certainly fans of, of our generation and our age, so make sure you check that out. It's definitely worth it. Uh, tuning back in for next week but we're just going to fill this this gap really this for this week we didn't want to have no show so we're just going to kind of run through some of the stuff that's been going on with the club this week just before i do a little bit of housekeeping if you haven't already please click that like and subscribe button we'd love you to come on board and join the channel we've got loads of content coming um you know before the, the season begins it's not too far away actually which we're going to talk about in a few minutes there so yeah smash that button hit that bell and every time we do a video you'll be notified that we've got one coming up we're on youtube as well tonight guys so jump in the comments like our good pal jordy tune for life has even at the youtube mate good to have you in the comments and i'll do my best to keep up with the comments i've not got my glamorous assistant tonight because he's uh he's uh, he's off with a poorly head god bless him so uh we're going to get stuck into uh just to a few bits and bobs before um before too long so uh, we won't be on too long guys hopefully about half an hour 40 minutes but we'll see how the, the comments flow and maybe we'll be a little bit longer so listen let's get stuck into the, the first topic we're going to cover which is just basically a, a view from the window so we've had some transfer activity as we all know about now obviously with the the massive signing of, uh, of the Batman. We've all had loads of Batman memes going around on Twitter and everything else, which has been great crack. I've enjoyed that exponentially. I really have. So I'm going to pull up a slide here just to talk about the business we've done so far. Really, we all know the guys we've signed. And to be honest, we've signed some real quality. I think the biggest issue that Newcastle United had for so long was that uh, we were like a sieve at the back, you know, certainly under Steve Bruce. You know, I don't mean make that joke that always has die giggling that we were opening Sharon Stone's legs and we were, we were terrible. You know, weird enough with Steve Bruce being a really good defender, we couldn't defend anything when he was in charge and we we're shipping goals in left, right and centre. So, you know, we signed Matt Target, 50 million quid is an absolute bargain for a player like him in his prime Premier League experience. He didn't put a foot wrong last season. He was brilliant. And I'm so glad we got that deal wrapped up. There was loads of talk about uh, Lodi, uh, who would have been a good player, but I'm just so glad we signed Target because he, he was just brilliant last season. Obviously, Nick Pope coming in for 10 million quid is an absolute snip for a goalkeeper of that quality. Premier League proven, England number one, in my opinion, um, should be over the little arm Mackham that kind of catch a ball. And then obviously the big the big hitter so far, the biggest one of the lot so far is, is obviously Sven Botman. Look at the handsome devil there holding the shirt up. Uh, signed in principle, whatever that means. Uh, we'll, we'll maybe get stuck into that in some of the comments as well, guys. But there's been some amazing signings there. Absolutely amazing. And, it, and it's definitely definitely showed up our back line. I mean, if you look at what the back line used to be, you know, I think somebody put a great stat on Twitter and I think our back line starting last season was, was it Freddie Woodman in goal. Um, I think it was either Mankio or Kraft, who had Matt Ritchie at left back and possibly Kieran Clark and Jamal Lascelles in defence. So if you compare that to now, and we're potentially going to have Nick Pope, England International or Dubravka, that's going to be a debate show in future episodes. So check that one out. We'll definitely be talking about that. Who should be the number one starting season? We're going to have Kieran Trippier at right back, providing he's fully fit. Hopefully he will be. Sven Botman, Dan Byrne or Fabian Shaw between those three. And then we're going to have Matty Target at left back. I mean, that's a fucking brilliant back four compared to the previous ones, which is unbelievable. A couple of comments we've got coming in there as well. Thanks for joining in, guys. Code Slushy up the mags. Two right, mate, up the mags. Indeed, Europe for us this season, mate. Europe finish. Yeah, Lee Forster can't come out now. He's on dad taxi duties. He's uh, um, driving the little man around. Or the little man, Christ, he's bigger than me, mate. I saw him at the bloody bar local not too long ago. Have a good one, mate. Keep us on the channel. We'll keep you entertained. Cold slush again. Lil for financial reasons. Yeah, the deal need to go ahead in July. Yeah, I think that's what Mark was saying as well. Something to do with the stock market or, or something or other. Yeah, at least saying long time since we had that much strength and depth at the back, which was absolutely amazing. And uh, as Jordy Two for Life says, Christ, thinking back, that is scary. It just shows you how far the club's come in such a short time. You know, there's been loads of comments like that, you know, doing the rounds on Twitter. And uh, it, sometimes you have to pinch yourself to, to, to remember, you know, what it used to be like under the, the previous regime. And I think a lot of even the mainstream media are waking up and smelling the coffee now that you see how well 
the new regimes do in the business. You see how well they're negotiating. You know, we had a debate show about should up the weekly wages. <clears throat> you know, myself and Di were, you know, were quite strong in the terms of we should a little bit to try and get the best talent. But they've shown with the Sven Botman deal, digging your heels in and, and not taking any shit from these clubs. You can get the player that you want at the deal that you want. And, and what a signing he's going to be. You know, um, I think, you know, Lee's in the comments tonight. Lee often calls him our own Vincent company, which which I just think is a hell of a, a hell of a thing to say because I think the guy really, really could be. I really do. I think he he, he could be here for 10 years. He could get, create a legacy. You know, he, he could be the best centre-half we've arguably ever had. You know, I was saying that just looking at the way he plays, um, people have commented on him not being very, very quick. I think that's a lot of salty fans, you know, the, the greedy six who are shitting themselves that were, were coming for that crown. Um, but he reads the game so well. He reminds me a lot of a, of a Woodgate, Colaccini-type player in terms of He's already thinking about where the forward's going to go before the forward goes there. And I think he does his homework. And if he's that meticulous with a manager like Eddie Howe that's that meticulous, we're in for a real treat with this lad. Absolutely. Yeah, good comment about Ekatike there, Lee, as well. I'm disappointed about this, to be honest with you. I mean, we were doing a rumour has it video, obviously, about um, Edwin Guiri as well, who, who looks a hell of a player as a, as a potential alternative to Ekatike. I mean... The, the game is full of greedy agents, isn't it? That, that, that quite often scupper deals like this. And I, and I just think that this is what's happened to Ekatike. The, the smell of pot of money, Ekatike has agreed to come. <clears throat> He's agreed that Newcastle's a good club for him to go to. Next step of his career, Premier League football. And then out of nowhere, this agent who, I don't know who he is, maybe he's a family member, maybe he's a friend, happens so often, doesn't it? You've always got somebody's gobby brother or somebody's gobby's gobby sisters, brothers, uncles, mothers or whatever comes out and says shit like that. And then all of a sudden the deal scuppered. So I think that might be the case with Ekatike, but I don't think the owners are going to piss around. I think they'll move on to new targets and it'll be Ekatike's loss, mate, 100%, because he isn't going to go anywhere bigger than the project right now. Um, Signing principle means that the fees paid installments. Yeah, good shout there, Peter. I think, yeah, I think that's pretty much what, what it is. Maldini wasn't quick. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Maldini wasn't quick. He just had a quick brain, mate, didn't he? Absolutely. You know, quite often the players who aren't the quickest, you know, are some of the best defenders. It's about reading the game, mate, isn't it? Alan's in the comments. How do you, Alan, as well, mate? Good to see you. We've got Mark in the comments. Great to see you, Mark, as well. If Paolo Maldini was probably one of the best defenders, you know, um, ever was trying to sign him, what does that tell you? You're totally right, Mark. The, the kid's been called the next Virgil van Dyke. You don't get called that if you're a shit player. It's as simple as that. You know, 22 years old, he's an absolute beast of a man. Presence, you know, he's played Champions League football. He's won a league. You know, he's he's, he's marked some of the... I mean, look at some of the players he's marked in that league. He's marked Neymar. He's marked Mbappe. He's marked Messi. You know, he's he's marked um, Moussa Dembele, at Leon. you know, and, and, and players like that. And uh, who's the lad? At, uh, well, he's probably marked bloody Jonathan David in training. Uh, his teammate at Lille, who's a hell of a striker as well. So, you know, he's, he's definitely got pedigree. I think he's tailor-made for the Premier League. And, you know, I think um, we had Ugly Bear in the comments the other night when me and Mark were doing the, the Botman video. And he said he could be Newcastle's Vidic, you know, and if he could be anything like, you know, Neymar Vidic was for Manchester United, Christ almighty, we've got a hell of a player on our hands. So it's really exciting, really exciting times. I, mean, I think we are probably going to move to more the midfield and the attacking areas now, I think, in terms of the targets, because we all know we still need a striker. We love Callum Wilson a bit. He's an absolute goal machine, absolute beast of a player, but he's made of glass, you know, unless he changes his game, which is something I've often said to the boys in the Evermore squad that, you know, like Shearer had to through injuries, like, you know, I know he's he's a swear word, but like Mike Lowen had to as well, you know, and his injuries later on in his career when he couldn't get that pace or rely on that pace, potentially Callum Wilson has to do a similar thing to stay fit, you know, but he, he does need, he does need another striker there as backup, maybe a guy that can play off him, a guy that can play in a three, you know, with Maxi one side, the guy on the other. I really like Lux Aguirre, I really do. And if we're going to move on to him from Ekatike, he's a hell of a sign-in as well. Mark's back in the comments. It's great when you see what a kid is capable of. It makes my hair stand. And then absolutely, Mark, I think uh, Botman's going to be one of the best defenders uh, we've ever had. I really do that. We'll just see how capable Botman is. 100%ly, you've already teed this one up, mate. You're, you're gasping to see this one. So the 20th of August, if anyone doesn't know, is when we're playing Manchester City and obviously Erling Haaland. 
And how amazing would it be if the bot man had him in his pocket? It would be the sweetest thing you've ever seen. And could you imagine that the, the crack would be going on on Twitter? Newcastle fans would be laughing that up absolutely, and the City fans would be will be shitting themselves. You know that, that we've got this player that can mark their player at the game. Remember, Yap Stam used to have Shearer's number, didn't he? Shearer still scored, mind you, but Yap Stam was a nightmare for Shearer to play against. If you remember, uh, he had fun against every other centre back, but he really, really struggled uh, against um, Yap Stam, who was a beast of a player. Uh, even you, is, is it Chenk or Sink? We've got basically three to four more good top class transfers, and we're going to be top seven or better. Who knows? I totally agree with you. He's got uh, Os Osman, Piquette, uh, Diaby. He's worked out some figures there. Yeah, mate, absolutely. There's no reason we can't sign any of those players. You know, I mean, this whole financial fair play conversation, we had a brilliant episode with uh, with Kieran Maguire on. It was absolutely amazing. Adam did a great job hosting it, and uh, some really, really key bits of information in that in that episode in terms of how you can spread the transfers across and how much money you could possibly spend. A lot of the journalists have thrown out a figure of 60 million, but is that 60 million paying installments for players? Because if you're paying five or six million quid a year, that's 10, you know, 50, 60 million quid players effectively, you know, so that's a, that's a, that's a big difference. And I think Kieran Maguire was saying we could spend up to 500 million in real terms on players, which, which is, is breathtaking. Uh, a winter break will help Wilson. I totally agree with that, Mark. If he doesn't go to the World Cup, I think if Wilson hits the ground running, the way England are with their centre forwards, unless something happens miraculously with Marcus Rashford, <clears throat> I I really do think that Wilson, if he's on form, will go to that World Cup. Um, I think Wilson offers something that the rest of them don't, and I think if anything happened to Harry Kane, Wilson Wilson brings you goals. Um, you know, it'd be great to see Newcastle play at the World Cup. I mean, Christ, we could have three. We could have Nick Pope, Trippier, and Wilson, which which would be incredible. You know, so uh, when was the last time we could ever say that? Jesus, was the last time we had players in a World Cup squad? Was it probably Shearer, Batty, Rob Lee, Steve Howie, possibly? I don't know if he went to a World Cup squad. Let us know in the comments, guys, if you can remember last time you cast had three England players going to a World Cup. So Jordy Toonfly has said, if Hugo doesn't move, then it's his loss, but he really needs some experts and good family around him. I do feel sorry for the lad. I do a little bit, mate, as well. I think a lot of these players do get really, really badly advised. And I think a lot of the times it's because they have family friends around them like oh give cousin knobhead a job as your as your advisor or whatever and the guy knows nothing he just he's just bullshit he's, he's enjoying the wealth of football the big gold chains the instagrams and all that crap and the girls and everything else and he just he just doesn't uh, he just doesn't do the right job for the player that's why it's really important that they pick the right agents i mean you've seen players get rid of agents so much in the past because they're scuppered and ruined deals you know and so yeah hopefully akatike can you know maybe wake up and realize the opportunity is potentially going to pass by here yeah so mark saying he totally agrees if Callum wilson's fit why not i totally agree he could definitely go to the world cup speaking on finances just for the next category we're going to move on to obviously high noon so we have had a new sponsor uh which people people don't know about and uh, that is noon so noon is a is an online middle eastern company that that sells pretty much everything really um so they have become the, the shirt sponsors for or the shirt sleeve sponsors beg your pardon for next season this is quite an interesting one because this is something that kieran did say on the video with adam in terms of how can you cash and bring in more revenue to the club um everybody knows mike ashley took the piss out of the club the the revenue that he paid for plastering that horrible sports direct logo all over the ground uh was was next to nothing he took the living piss out of this club and because of that this club has earned very very little commercial revenue and and that's why these guys have come in and obviously added a bit more revenue the other thing will be corporate seats as well you know sales and hospitality seats and everything else that can, that can boost up the revenue for for the club uh, and you know this is a middle eastern company as well and we're probably going to get a lot of shade people will be throwing out the saudi line and everything else but mark did pull this up which is quite interesting in case any of those guys want to kind of throw that typical blood money you know all that crap around about the saudi ownership manchester city have been in partnership with noon uh since uh, April 2001, and I've never heard anybody slag off Manchester City or Pep Guardiola for that, or ask Pep Guardiola about where that money comes from. So I'm sure Eddie Howe will probably get thrown a stupid uh, comment like that in one of his uh, his press conferences, to be honest with you. So, so yeah, it's great to have new sponsorship there. It's great to have new revenue in. Thank God Ashley's gone, and we're going to have a lot more 
uh, revenue coming in, I think, in the in the years to come in corporate sponsorship and, you know, hospitality and everything else with, with this club, the way it goes. And if we higher we go in the league, you know, the more appealing we're going to be to these people. So Mark's back in the comments. I think Ekatike has already sacked his agent. Yeah, that's probably a good shout, Mark. Uh, Jason's there. How are you doing, Jason? <laughs> he needs to sack another. You're right, mate. If he, if he misses this opportunity, I'd sack them as well. Emma's in the comments. Nice to see you, Emma. Um, in an ideal world, what forward would you get? Ooh, that is a really good question that, you know. Oh, God, in an ideal world, if I could get any forward to come and play for us, uh, I mean, obviously, Harlan's gone. Um, oh, that's a really good question, that. I'm trying to think now. Uh, forward, anyone Anyone got suggestions in the comments? I'm just trying to think. Um, I, I quite like Ollie Watkins from Villa, I must admit, because he's got pace, he, he plays on the shoulder, he can get a goal or two. He's, he's a very good player. If you could keep him fit, Danny Ings would be a, a crack and sign as well, but I just think Danny Ings is... It's just too injury prone, to be brutally honest with you. Um, the boy from Napoli looks a hell of a player, a really, really good player. I would have loved Patrick Schick, uh, or Shtick, as Lee called him, if he's still in the comments there. He's going to jump in in a minute if he is. Uh, Patrick Schick would have been the perfect striker for me, an absolute all-round player. But if we're going to have Callum Wilson as the main man, we probably want somebody with a, a bit of speed, somebody who can drop in the hole and get the ball, somebody who can find space. You know, So I quite like the looks of... Um, uh, you know, of of, of Armin, uh, is Armin Guiri from Nice. Uh, he looks a really good player. He's not a prolific goal scorer. He's, he's kind of got a bit of a, an Iosi Perez type goal scoring record. Um, but I think he could fit into this team really, really well. He could play either side out wide in a three. He could play behind Wilson. He could play instead of Wilson if he's if he's if he's injured or when he's injured. Uh, so, yeah, he'd be a good signing as well. Mark is saying it's just jealousy, Chris. You're totally right, mate. These salty fans... They cannot stop being jealous about our wonderful club and the new the new journey we're all on. Werner's a good shout, uh, Tune for Life. Yeah, Werner's, Werner's a bit hit and miss, mate, isn't he, to be fair? I think um, he, he works his arse off, but sometimes he just does the, the simple things completely wrong. So that worries me a little bit. Uh, yeah, Nikanko from Red Bull is a great shout. Very expensive, as would be uh, is a, is a Os Osmerson from uh, Napoli. Um, the Nigerian boy, he's a, he's a brilliant player, but I think the quote of Manchester United, 85 million quid for him. I'd quite like Rashford. If Rashford could get his get his shit together, Rashford would be a really good signing for us as well. Uh, he needs a new challenge. So Rashford is, is a good shout as well. Um, Lee is saying, forwards, Botman sponsors, I'm aroused simply because we have big tellies in the concourse again. Absolutely, Lee, especially for the likes of us who the eyes are getting a bit shit the older we get made. Uh, yeah, good shout. Martinez from Inter would be a fantastic signing. And we've got there. Uh, but Lottie is a realistic striker for us. Absolutely, Kenk. I mean, to be fair, you know, where Newcastle United of now, where Newcastle United that's ambitious, where Newcastle United that, that is ruthless in the transfer market, where Newcastle United who do the due diligence on players, um, this is not my gosh, it's Newcastle United anymore. So, you know, I'm talking about players like Ings and that. It's almost like muscle memory to go back to players like that. As good of a player as Danny Ings is, we should probably be aiming for bigger and better, really. Players that could that could have a higher ceiling than Danny Ings. I mean, Danny Ings hasn't got a long left in the game. He's very injury prone as well. But, you know, I think as Mark's agreeing with me in the comments as well, uh, Marcus Rashford would be a good signing. He needs a change, 100%. Manchester United is rotten to the core. You know, I know Eric Ten Hag's in there now, but he's not Harry Potter. He's not going to wave a magic wand and make things all better all of a sudden. You know, Ronaldo's still there. That whole team... To be successful next season has to be geared around Ronaldo, has to do it. That's what they have to do to get back into the top four. That's that's mission number one. I don't think Rashford will want to be involved with that. And if he wants to save his England career at the age he is, he's got to move. And this is a great move for him, but he's going to have to lower those wage demands because, as we said in the, in the debate show, uh, we're not going to go over the 120 grand um, basic salary. Yes, there might be appearances, money and goal scores and everything else. So it'll be a true test to see if Rashford has the ambition to come and join this project, if we're interested in Rashford, I don't see why we wouldn't be. Um, I'd, I'd really advocate signing him, yeah. It'd be a really, really good show. So just moving on to the next section, um, we've obviously had the launch of the <laughs> the infamous third kit that everyone's been known about. Third kit opinion split, as I put. Now, this is definitely polarising opinion. If anyone doesn't remember what the third kit is, there it is right there with uh, the handsome devil, Callum Wilson, right at the front there. Obviously, St. Max, Lascelles, and uh, a couple of the, the, the NUFC women players there as well. I think that's uh, is it Katie Park on the top goal scorer, number nine, who did the Shearer at St. James's. So, yeah, th this shirt is controversial for obvious reasons. It's controversial because it bears a massive resemblance to the Saudi Arabian um, shirt. And obviously, it, it it's completely, uh, you know, energised the, uh, the anti-piff 
and Saudi Arabian ownership of Newcastle United. It's so all these journalists who have come out of the woodwork. There was another guy who, you know, he was talking about, you know, questioning the players who were saying, and he totally irrelevant. And then he was on Good Morning Britain the next day. And then I think I, I did the um, Conor McGregor gift. Who the fuck is that guy? Because I didn't know who the hell he was. But, you know, this kind of thing just fuels that um, that kind of animosity and that and that controversy towards our owners. We all know that our owners aren't going to win any humanitarian of the year awards. We're all aware of that as Newcastle United fans, 100%. My personal take on the shirt is, you know, could it have been slightly better planned? Yes. Is it all about the commercial revenue side? 100%. Um, we've had a green and white shirt before, but we haven't been owned by the Saudi Arabian private investment fund before. So it's not had that level of controversy attached to it. I won't get too into it because I think we are going to gear up one of our debate shows about this because the Evermore squad are kind of split on it. Some of us don't think it's a good idea. Some of us couldn't give a shit and some of us sit in the middle. So I think we probably will cover this in a special debate episode. But for me, really, before we all get our knickers in or not, I don't believe that shirt will be worn a great deal. I'll be brutally honest with you. I think it'll make an appearance in the preseason friendlies, possibly, which I'm going to come on to in a little bit. Um, maybe in some of the FA Cup games, you know, maybe... I don't know, one or two games in the season. I really, really can't see how that is going to be a, a regular shirt that, that that's getting worn kind of every single week. We've got some comments coming in about that as well. I think Lee's saying it's an unnecessary own goal. Yeah, well, we'll know what side Lee will be on the debate show. Lee's a, an ever more squad member, so we'll get him back on there. Yeah, so you're right. It probably was a bit, a bit reckless in terms of the thinking maybe we'll get stuck into that in a little bit um so we've got mark saying most teams in the premiership would love to have pif i totally agree with that mark this is the bit i keep going back to so the people who shout the loudest about that i mean lee's a diehard newcastle fan cut him in half his black and white been going since a year dot but a lot of the manchester united fans chelsea fans all these guys chelsea fans by the way who were chatting about roman abramovich when he was accused of being vladimir putin's crony so work that out but they would have loved the PIF to have bought them. And there's no way that they would have been um, denouncing the PIF for having a green and white shirt if it was a Manchester United shirt, if it was a Liverpool shirt, if it was a Chelsea shirt. You know, we all know there's an agenda against Newcastle United. Of course, Lee does have a point that we need to cause any more controversy. But, you know, the shirt is there. We're going to have to deal with it. I won't buy it, personally. It's not because, of, you know, the way it is, I'm just not really a big fan of it. But I like the blue shirt. You know, I like the blue shirt. And I like, obviously, the home shirt. I'm not a big fan of third shirts. I never really have been. Uh, especially that fucking garish yellow one we had that season of the championship. That was absolutely horrendous. It really was. Emma's back in the comments. We've got, I'd break the bang for DRB. 100% Emma. DRB's unbelievable. Um, pace, you know, skill. Exactly what we need in the right hand side. We rely too much on Maxi. When Maxi goes off on one of his little wobbles, the squad really suffers. Wilson suffers. You know, we don't create. We need to lighten that load a little bit. Yes, Bruno is there to do that and carry the can a bit, but we need the Arby. Derby's a hell of a player. You know, obviously, we like to Chelsea going after Rafinha. We did a rumor has it video on Rafinha. Chelsea really pissed me off. They're one of them types of clubs that they're the reason that the transfer market is so overly inflated. Rafinha's not worth 65 million quid. Me and Mark have this argument all the time. He's worth that to Leeds. Yes, I get that point, but he's not worth it. He's just been fighting a relegation fight. He's not worth 65 million quid. Let Chelsea sign him. If Chelsea want to sign him, crack on and do it. But in my opinion, I'd rather have Diaby. But if they sign Rafinha, they won't be after Diaby. So it'll free him up for us, Emma, hopefully. We'll get that all signed, sealed, delivered. So we've got Ken back in the comments. How much would they want for Rashford? 60, 70 million. Again, it goes into that inflated price, isn't it? James Ward Prowse, 75 million. We've just signed Botman, and we signed Botman and Bruno for less than James Ward Prowse. Mental, absolutely mental. 75, 80 million, you'll get uh, Os Osman on a six year contract, works out 50 million quid a year for financial fair play. 100% may, yeah, that's the way Kieran was talking about it as well. Maggots in the comments. Yeah, white and green. Yeah, it works. in 99 one wasn't too bad, mate. Yeah, I did like the, uh, was it the Asics one? Uh, the green and white one. It was green and blue stripes. I quite like that one as well, mate. That was quite good. Old school shirts, mate, I like. Can't beat the grand economy, though. You cannot beat that. Jordy Toon for Life, what about the, the good Saudi football fans? It makes sense. We're owned by Saudi. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I, I really do think that. Definitely tune in for this debate show, guys, because I think uh, you, you'll definitely get a good... Uh, a good few comments in there as well in uh, in terms of the different sides of the fence. Mark saying, just remember to like and subscribe. Oh, thanks, mate. Really appreciate that, Mark. Always nice to get your comments in there, mate. 14 years, Man United taking Saudi money. 100% to and for life. You don't see that on Sky Sports, do you, mate? No, they keep that quiet. That's the top six bias, you know, or greedy six bias. Maggots in there saying Chelsea would have had to fight 
to be bought for three years either. Yeah, absolutely, mate. You're totally right. Kieran did say this as well because of the FFP regulations that we are kind of we are kind of at the the worst time to do it. I think I made the analogy of uh, they've all pissed in the pool and now they're checking the water. Um, we can't we can't do what City did. We can't go and throw money at people like Rubinho, you know, Tevez and all these guys. So we're going to be under a microscope for every single one. Um, that, that, that we would do, wouldn't. Sorry, Maga, I did get that, mate. Uh, Carl said, no fans will complain about the revenue the third kit will generate. You're right, mate, you're right. Um, I think it could turn a lot of fans back round, but I think it's a bit of a storm in a teacup. I think that, you know, the Saudi Arabian ownership, you can love it or hate it. Most of the guys that I know, and some of the boys never more, you know, make that case very, very eloquently. But, you know, they're happy that Piff owned the club. But though, as as Lee said there, do have to cause more controversy. But you know, I think it's just one of those. It's chicken and egg. You know, the commercial decisions will will unfortunately be made. You know, way above the fans' heads. You know, and sometimes it'll be polarizing like this. But I think it'll disappear in in a short period of time, especially when the shirt is very rarely seen. To be honest with you, Graham says he wouldn't touch Rashford with a barge pole. If a good offer came for ASM, would you take it? As long as we could sign a quality replacement, Graham, I think if, as Emma said before, if the RB comes in, I think he could quite easily do ASM's job. If we signed, um, as it uh, Guiri as well from Nice, if we've got Guiri and DRB in, you've got a right and left footed player there. You know, ASM's got a lot to do to stay in the squad, in my opinion, mate. And if, if he wants to go, sell him, as long as you get the money for it, in my opinion. Wouldn't have a problem with that at all. We've got a comment for Mark there. I'll back five costs what they paid for Maguire. Oh, mate, that's brilliant. We need a chant for that when we play Manchester United, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we've got Maggot again saying, reckon we've got one brewing in the background quite at the moment. Will be unveiled soon. I think you might be right. I mean, obviously, we've covered in the comments there about the, the delay to the Botman deal, which I think has frustrated a lot of people. Um, but, you know, the geese guys know what they're doing. They're after so many players. I mean, Newcastle United is a hotbed now of of, of players looking to move. You know, the, the financial restraints on other clubs at the minute are struggling. You know, COVID's hit them. It's caught up with them. Two years of, of decreased revenue. You know, players looking to move on. Players maybe getting to the stage where they don't believe they're going to get you know, the contracts at the club that they, that they want to do. You know, this this is a project that's so exciting and, and the ceiling is so high on this project at the minute. Other clubs are, are kind of at their ceiling right now and they can't push on any further. You've seen that with Manchester United. They're go, they've gone backwards for the past six years. It doesn't matter who they've had in. They've had Marino in. They've had Van Gaal in. You know, they've got Nostalgic, got Solskjaer in. They've signed Ronaldo back. They've gone further and further back, you know. So this is a great project for players to be involved in, especially young players like Botman and, and Ekatike, hopefully, if we can get that deal put together, you know. So, uh, yeah, for me, this is an exciting time and I think... I think the phone will be ringing off the hook, you know, in terms of agents wanting to get their players to Newcastle United. So Lee's saying he's ASM's biggest critic, but we need to give him a season surrounded by better players. Well, he did say that, Lee, didn't he, in that infamous interview. Um, give me better players and look what I can do. And to be fair, when Wilson came back, he did start setting up a few more goals. Alan's saying he doesn't want now from Man United, same as Everton. Both need to rebuild and buying them uh, will only help them. You're right, mate. You're absolutely right. There is an element there as well. Um, I do think Rashford is a good player, though. I really do. Um so I think he'd be the only one I would take, mate, to be honest with you. McTominay's been linked. We are going to do a rumour has it video on McTominay. I'm not massively sold on him, even though, you know, I support the Scottish national team. Uh, I'm not sold on McTominay. I, I think, you know, Longstaff could possibly, you know, get to the same level he's at, to be honest with you. It's only because he got bruised for a couple of years he's he's gone back. Maggot's saying, play ASM as a number 10, Fraser out left, and get a, a right-sided attack and strike. That's a good shout, Maggot. I think ASM could be unbelievable in that free roll. He'd cause fucking chaos, wouldn't he, mate? But it's about the discipline on them as well, isn't it? You know. So Mark's saying it's strange that uh, ASM is supposedly 140k a week when he knows it won't pay more than 120 as he tried to edge for a move. I think that's just modern-day football, Mark. I think once you get the smoke blown up your ass like ASM's got, um, he's seen the you know the war flags displays and everything else. He's maybe thinking he's you know he's the biggest player at the club. I'll be honest with you, when Bruno Gamera stepped on that park and did what he did, ASM was the second biggest player at this football club. Bruno is the man, in my opinion. Bruno is the main man for this project. Wilson's up there as well, no doubt about that. But yeah, Bruno is by far and away the star draw for this, this club at the minute. BGT is in the comments. Good to see you, buddy, as always. If the cells are sold, do you think how we'll buy another centre back? I'm not too sure about that. Me and Mark did speak about this, mate. That um I think that. You've got Kel Watts, who's done really well on loan. I think you'll take a look at Kel Watts. You've got Dummett that can play left back. 
and centre back as well. And then obviously Cher signed a new two year deal, uh, Botman and Byrne. So I don't know, mate. I'm, I'm not sure whether he would buy another centre back. Excuse me, I'll have a drink here. Chatting away here, my mouth's getting dry. I think, um, I think it depends on how he assesses the squad, but I don't know if there's that many better ones out there that you wouldn't have to pay a fortune for. We talked about Eric Bailly, but for me, he's too injury prone, mate. Even as a squad player, I don't think I'd have him. So, two and fly say McTominay is rubbish. No way we should help Man U after the shaft as well. And I said Lingard, very true, mate. Lingard's another one as well. Lingard could come back on the radar, um, as long as he doesn't bring his bloody back and dancers from his, uh, his TikTok video. Which, uh, God, that was horrendous, wasn't it? I think that's enough not to sign him on its own, really. But there's talk about him lowering his, his wage demands. So, you know, if Lingard can lower his wage demands, you never know. Yeah, he, uh, he might end up in a black and white shirt. Whether you'd have him, let us know in the comments what you think. Mark's saying, get the money for ASM spend on Diaby's world class uh, and double the price after the World Cup, 100%. Mate. That World Cup was going to add some zeros onto these players, absolutely. Alan's saying, the thing is with young players, you'll get a return on them. This is the mad thing, Alan. This is what Ashley wanted to do. And uh, he just didn't do it right, did he? He didn't have a fucking clue what he was doing. You know, he thought he was selling trainers and jogging pants, this stupid twat. Uh, Jimmy's in the comments. How are you doing, Jimmy? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thank you so much, mate. Really good. I've uh, yeah, I've had I've had a tough couple of weeks, mate, but I'm feeling I'm feeling good to jump on and do this and chat to you wonderful people. I, I've got a tough day ahead of me tomorrow, guys. So I'm uh, I'm really happy to come on and have a good chat with you and take my mind off things, which is which is really good. So I'm just going to move on to the the next category here, uh, just as we're blasting through. Uh, is the season tickets sold out? So I'm just going to pull up a little tweet here that you probably all saw and it's a little skinny one i'll move my head either side there like the matrix so the additional season tickets that went on sale were sold out very very quickly now i'd be really keen to hear in the comments guys if you were one of the ones who missed out on a season ticket or whether you managed to renew your season ticket um i saw some horror stories about the website it was crashing on people people have loads of problems i know a few of my mates who have had season tickets for you know, the kind of last five, six, seven seasons, they just give up and said, fuck it, you know, I'm not bothered. I'll, you know, I'll watch it on my dodgy stick or whatever it may be. And, you know, I'll just try and get tickets off the lads kind of through the season. But it just goes to show you the demand, you know, for those tickets. Um, I think obviously the priority was keeping the season ticket renewals for the guys who had been there religiously. You know, years and years ago, I, I've been mine off after KK got fucked over the second time around, and that was me. I, I had a huff up. I've been lucky enough to get tickets from a lot of the boys over the years and go to games. Um, and obviously, a lot of the Evermore squad are, are you know, religiously season ticket holders. So I think um, they, they've they hopefully been able to re renew and get themselves back in the ground. I think they have. Um, but there's been a lot of talk on Twitter as well, and this is another thing we might bring to a debate, is is it about time to extend the capacity of St. James's Park? When you see how quick these tickets fly out, um, yeah, Lee's in the comments there. Yep, Lee's renewed his season ticket. Absolutely brilliant, mate. Love that. Um, but is it time to, to increase the capacity of St. James's Park? We, we kind of got dealt a bit of a blow as Ashley's part and shot when he when he sold strawberry place, didn't he? And he, he screwed us over for extending out that way of the ground. But there's still, I think, a bit above the leases that we could extend for an extra, is it extra 20,000 capacity, I think? Mr. Forster will keep me right in the comments if I'm wrong. I think it's about 20,000 capacity to get up to 70,000. A lot of people have been talking about should we move, should we um, have a new ground, you know, down by the um, the arena, I think, because um, the, obviously the arena is going to move to where the Sage is. Um, so that ground will be effectively dead. You know, will the club look to buy that ground and build a new stadium, call it the Aramco Stadium or whatever? I don't know how that would sit with our fan base. And James's Park is home. So James's Park is 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 way more than just bricks and mortar to everybody um, at this football club. And do the, do the owners really want to do that? Do they really want to knock down St. James's Park and move to a, a, a big new stadium? If you look at the other clubs that have done it, though, obviously Arsenal did it, you know, with Highbury and the Emirates. Manchester City did it with Maid Road, which, to be fair, was a shithole and a car park. Do you know what I mean? So that that was probably why they did it. But, you know, Newcastle United and St. James's Park just seems to be a bit more special. That It almost seems like you just that, that's a sacrilege to do that. Let us know what you guys think in the comments about that. But we'll definitely do a debate show on this. And I think we'll all be on the probably one side of the fence, really. But we might have some of them on. Safe standard, Jeff saying. Thanks for jumping in the comments, Jeff. Yeah, I think you're right, mate. I mean, Ashley was really against that, wasn't he? He was... He was point blank, just didn't bother entertaining it. I don't know whether at that point he kind of had enough and he just wanted to to, to sell up and fuck off, really. And he, he knew that Piff were interested and he was he was trying his best to get that deal through. But yeah, for me, increasing the leaser's capacity to, say, 20,000, so that gives you, you know, 72,000. I think that's ample. I really think that's ample. Um, in terms of the, the capacity, 
on the ground and your everyday ticket holder. Yes, in terms of the revenue, you've got the corporate um, revenue that they need to increase and sell the boxes off and everything else. So that that's that's a, a money decision. But capacity St. James's Park for me, yeah, Lisa's extension 100 percent is the first place to to start. So what Mark said, we must increase the ground. Yeah, it's got to be at least 65,000. I totally agree with that, mate. St. James's Park must stay. Other clubs have done it and regretted it. I totally agree with you. I mean, Mark used the comment about where West Ham in the in the, in the London Stadium, but that doesn't sit right with me because they got that other technicality, didn't they, from the Olympics. The fans were furious about that. That atmosphere is still shit there compared to the bowling ground, you know, Upton Park. It was, it was nothing like, the, the, the atmosphere is nothing like that when you play against West Ham at the London Stadium now. The fans are too far away, that running track's in the way. And for me, yeah, they'll reg they regretted that as a club. Uh, but their own as a, a monumental shit houses aren't they? I don't even think the West Ham fans like those guys. So BJT say we need to demolish the existing stadium and build up as we're on a hill, then we can raise the stands. It's a fair shout, uh, BJT. It's it's a very, very delicate situation. Um, I think the owners will have to play that so carefully. But they're great at engaging with people. Uh, Lee's in the comments, Lee's part of the, the trust as well. I'm sure if they were going to do anything with the ground, they'd engage with the trust. Lee's saying any extension of the Lisa's end would need to come with oxygen masks. <laughs> You're totally right, mate. Nosebleeds. Like nose, everyone would just be like, oh, well, hankies. Black and white hankies, I think, mate, with the nosebleeds. I'd be like a war flags display if they need a red bit. Just get everybody with the handkerchief with the bloody noses. But yeah, it's a really delicate situation out for the owners. And I think they'd have to take a real, real delicate stance on that. And I think engaging with the fans, I mean, they're brilliant with the fans. They engage with, obviously, war flags, the trust, you know, prominent Newcastle podcast. We're not one of them yet. Hopefully we'll be one day, but you know, the likes of your true face and guys like that, they're always talking to these people, you know? So, so yeah, it's great to see the owners engagement with people like that. So it's absolutely fantastic. And hopefully that continues and it doesn't change even when the club grows. So Lee said extensions will happen. The Gallagher and the East stand architects will be able to find a way despite the challenges. Yeah. Maybe I've got my stands wrongly. You might be right. me keep me right there. But I think, yeah, that there's no doubt the club is going to grow and the more success we have on the park, you know, the more demand there is going to be for tickets as well. You know, not just from Newcastle fans at home, but abroad as well. You know, you'll have the outside areas, you know, the likes of people in the Cumbrian areas who have supported Manchester United and in Liverpool historically, they might start switching their attention to Newcastle, the next generation of fans coming through. So there's, there's so many, so many possibilities in the future. And the future is bright and it's great to be able to be talking about it like this with you guys. You know, thank God that ownership change and that takeover happened. So we've got Jeff saying, I'd love to be able to get a season ticket in the near future, but I'm quite happy for us to stay at St. James's Park and not get one. Yeah, I think you're right, Jeff, to be fair, mate. I, I don't have a season ticket either. I watch every single game. You know, I live <laughs> vicariously through the boys on the uh, on the Evermore show, and uh, it's great to do that. But I've been to a few games last season. Absolutely loved it, mate. And yeah, if I could get one tomorrow, I would, mate. But I'm quite happy to do the same as you. But Alan said he's heard of experiments of broadcasting using virtual reality. Ooh, May at least ease the situation. That's an interesting one, mate. Yeah, virtual reality. Hmm. We'll have to see how that one goes, mate. Very futuristic, mate. And BJT saying the owner can see that there's a demand for tickets, so we will have to do something in the next two years. Yeah, you're right, mate. They're very, very smart businessmen, way smarter than I am. Um, so I think, yeah, 100%. I think they they definitely will be doing something uh, about this and, and, and you know, and, and getting on top of it in the next two years. Hopefully the success comes on the pitch, European football, things like that imagine bringing that back and the, the clamour for tickets after that would be incredible. So speaking of the season coming, pre-season is about to begin. So I've got a couple of little things here that I've just seen for pre-seasons. If I can get the right one up first, is it? Uh, ah, here we go. The right one first. So there is a behind closed doors taking place at the Benton Training Ground on Saturday the 9th of July, which will effectively be our first proper pre-season game. I'm not too sure um, any of the new players might play. I mean... They've obviously all been on the holidays and everything else as well. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see who plays in that game. But you might see the likes of an Elliot Anderson, maybe Kel Watts, Eddie Howe might get a little look at them. You know, yes, it's against Gateshead, but Gateshead are a decent lower tier side. You know, they've got some decent players in there, ex Newcastle players in the mix as well. So it would be interesting to see how, how the boys fare up against that. Um, you know, and, uh, and obviously the new players, they might be making their kind of debuts in the big preseason games. Now, the, the ticket office has said, I think these games go on general sale, or the general sale is the 5th of July, but we have got, um, I think there's a two German opponents in Austria next month, um, which is part of the preparation. So Friday, the 15th of July, we are playing, uh, ew, we're playing there, so TSV 1860. Yeah, and then uh, we'll be playing uh, Mainz 
on the 18th of July. So so those preseason games will be, I'm sure, screened somewhere. If they're not screened on NUFC TV, there'll be some kind of a link somewhere to watch it. You know, some little band that'll have one kicking around on Twitter or something like that. But but it'll be interesting to see, you know, if any of the new players make their debuts now. They've had tough, grueling seasons, you know, the likes of Botman. Um, Pope, the likes of Pope as well, they've had long, grueling seasons. Um, Botman's played international football as well in the break. If we sign that Katike, he's been involved, obviously, in the years of the Toulon, the, the, the tournament where friend, France won it. He played in that as well. So I think these players might be given a rest and we might not see them until towards the back end of pre-season. But, you know, we're keeping an eye on the transfers. And uh, <laughs> just to look at Lee's comment there, Mrs. F will find the link. Never found. Mrs. F is amazing, by the way. Lee, Lee's wife is is an absolute bandit when it comes to these types of things. I thought I was good. Mark was good. But she's blown a pair of us out of the water, mate, I tell you. Uh, but, yeah, so I think some of these players might make their debuts in pre-season, which, which would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, and we'll get a good chance to look at them first and foremost and see how they fit into the side. Um, some more comments there. Virtual reality, is that how Jeff Hendrick has been playing his game for the last three years? He does move like a, a virtual reality bot, I think, to be fair. Jeff saying an article today about a system like Liverpool, where we have the fans of season tickets can sell a ticket if they can't make a game. So no empty seats. That's a really good idea, mate. I really hope there's some truth in that, Jeff. Um, Tink's back in the comments there. Eventually, Cash United is going to need a new stadium. Ticket demands already too much from now and imagine UEFA Conference League three or four years absolutely mate I said that European football stadium capacity 85,000 we're getting close to new camp stadium there mate Newcastle camp stadium uh, Mark saying he thinks it'll be the players he's looking at and see if they're staying or going out on loan you're right mate I think you've got the likes of you know I think the younger players are really key on that one Mark I think going back to this Gateshead game on the 9th of July um, you know I live locally I live, I live in Shields I've seen Matty Longstaff buzzing around, willing around, he's been in his little jollies and he's come back. So I think a game like that for Matty Longstaff would probably be a chance for him to show that, you know, show Eddie how what he can do. He's obviously went to Mansfield last season. He did all right. You know, he banged a couple of goals in. He looked sharp. He he got to the um, the playoffs with them. You know, they, they fluffed it in the playoffs. But Matty, Matty looked like he was, he was, he was, you know, doing bits there. So lower league, obviously. But Elliot Anderson blew him out of the water. He was absolutely superb. Uh, down at Bristol, um, he was absolutely amazing. Um, so Elliot Anderson will definitely be one I think that they they look at in that game, as as will be Kel Watts, and then Eddie Howe will make a decision on what he wants to do. It might be tough for Kel Watts to get in that side unless he's phenomenal in pre-season, uh, and then you know he'll make a decision on that Eddie Howe, I'm sure. Yeah, no game against York City. I know, mate, that's a great. I, I love going to York. I've got loads of customers in York. It's a brilliant place to go. Uh, we've got Lee again. Is it, if a season ticket holder doesn't use their ticket for 10 consecutive games their seat should be made available for purchase that's a fair play Lee. I, th I think the only the only way you'd have an issue with that i think would be if somebody had a long-term illness or something like that possibly and they couldn't make it i don't know how you would inform the club of that how you would notify them i'm just i'm not sure how that would work mate um you know could you could you get your your mate or your, your son or your brother or something to use your ticket in your absence i, I don't know that, that could open a real can of worms now but i, I think that the, the, the Newcastle United, as we say, is the most loyal fan base out there. You know, I'm not just saying that because I'm completely and utterly biased. Uh, I'm saying that because it's true. You know, I, I don't think you'd find a fan base that is stuck with this team through the 14 years of mediocrity that Mike Ashley's put us through. You know, from from the years before, you know, when we were nearly winning the league with Kevin Keegan, you know, to the, the debacle of Ruth Hullet and the, the shitness of Sunes, and then the resurgence under Bobby, you know, then into the modern day era of Ashley and just the the, the grey bleak horribleness of, of of that whole regime, Newcastle fans have stayed with this club through thick and thin. People like Lee, season ticket holders who have never given fair play to them, but I also have loads of respect for them who got pissed off and went fuck this, I'm away. You know because it's a lot of money to pay out in a year. It's a lot of investment. There's a lot of time away if people have got families and stuff. Some people like getting away from the wife at the weekend or like getting away from the husband at the weekend as well. I'm sure, but but you know. This fan base is is something special, it really is. I think players like Trippier are seeing that now. Dan Burner always knew it because he's a Geordie. You know, Bruno's seen it. Um, I think Botman will see it as well. All this talk about him maybe not wanting to be here. You know, the first time he, he steps out of St. James's Park, you know, in front of that crowd with war flags display, that he wipes out Jack Cole back to a massively loud cheer. I think uh, <laughs> I think he'll just fall in love with this club and uh, he'll fall in love and stay in love with it. Yeah, our dealers were shocking. Yeah, it was me. I was a little bit too young for our dealers, I think, man. I just got the back end of it. I know I've had a hard paper on me, but I wasn't old enough to enjoy Aussie. Um, BJT, yeah, it must be exciting for a player 
to be told in such detail why you wanted. It must have given Botman a real lift and a glimpse into how his career could play out. You're totally right, mate. I think we can't underestimate the selling job these guys have done on players like like him and Bruno. I mean, Bruno, I mean, God, everybody out there really should have made a move for Bruno. You know, Manchester United were screaming for a player like Bruno. Arsenal were screaming for a player like Bruno. Um, you know, Liverpool obviously losing players. Like they had that midfield, but when Yaldon went, guys of like that, Bruno would have slotted in there perfectly. So for them to convince someone like Bruno, who has got such a high ceiling as a player, um, you know, I know James is the is the resident sensationalist of Evermore, but but James is right when he says that Bruno could be the best player, you know, best midfielder we've ever had, and arguably up there with some of the best players we've ever had. And he just seems to love being here, which is the best part about it. I think Botman will be the same. I really, really do. Got a comment there from Stu. Good to see you, Stu. I haven't seen you in a while, buddy. Hope you're well. Um, when do you think how will be offered a contract extension? You know, it's an interesting one. I think if we start the season really well next season and, and we're flying like we did the back end of the last season, I think they might sit down and have a chat with Eddie Howe then to try and tie him down because, you know, England is a very fickle beast at the minute, isn't it, with Southgate? If he's struggling like he is doing and if he has a mare at the World Cup, you know, England might start courting people like Eddie Howe and Graham Potter. So Newcastle might want to tie Eddie down way before that, you know, because uh, I could easily see that happening. I really, really could. Mark saying there, the last home game against Arsenal, I couldn't believe the noise in the ground. The fans were definitely the 12th man. You know, it's amazing. Mark said that after the game, that all you got to do is show a player that war flags display and say, do you want to be a part of that? Do you want to be involved in that? And maybe people like Botman have seen that because, I mean, we've had Thomas on from War Flags on the show, absolutely brilliant bloke. And I love what war flags do, but they, they literally have given us such an appeal to those those players that are coming to this football club. It's like what you see in Europe with the Dortmund, the Dortmund displays and things like that. You know, we are right up there. We're getting right up there. And I think the more war flags get involved and the more that atmosphere continues to just be electric for players, they're going to want to come to this football club and they're not going to want to leave when they come here when they see that. James is in the comments. He's got, is there any possibility the Botman deal could go pear-shaped in principle? I don't think so, James. I think they, they wouldn't have put him on the... the the website holding the shirt up, I think. I think somebody's mentioned before it's paid in instalments. I think Mark made reference to the stock market. So in terms of declaring a source of income, I think it's all to do with a kind of financial window. Because if you think about it, you know, the 1st of July is Friday. If that's the new financial year, then maybe they'll declare that. They don't have to pay taxes on it and all that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? So I think it possibly is something like that, mate. So no, I don't think it's going to go pear-shaped. I'll be absolutely fucking livid if it does. Um, so at least said everyone needs to get on War Flags and fund a pond campaign. 100% Lee, yeah, everybody jump on the War Flags website if you haven't already and just whack a pound in, help the lads out. They're absolutely incredible, the job they do. Um, they're absolute superheroes, in my opinion. You know, if, if I was the owner of the club, I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even let them pay for a ticket. I'd, I'd, I'd give their seat free a charge for the service that they're doing for this football club. But, you know, it's, yeah, definitely a good shout, mate. Chuck it in there and, and fund the guys and, and and keep it going. But, but yeah, we, we just want to jump on and do this little show. We've had some cracking comments there, guys. Thank you so much. And I've got a lot of you online at the minute watching me, just me chatting. So I really appreciate that. Uh, we normally have a few more of the boys on. Uh, we're trying to do that. Next week, we are going to have a special guest on. So definitely 100% come back on and, uh, and check that out. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Um, because, yeah, we're going to have a really, like I say, special guest on. Um, it was someone that you'll know very well. Yeah, so uh, that'll be a really good show for next week. Got another couple of comments coming in. Uh, Friday, the Botman video and interviews will come out. Do you know what it is, um, Tune for Life? I think they've already done this. I saw there was, a, there was a lad on Twitter who isn't an ITK guy. We don't do ITK, by the way. Some people in our room has it videos have, have, have got a little bit confused about us doing that. We don't do ITKs. We're just reporting the links that are in the media and, and asking opinions on it. That's all we do. Uh, but somebody saw Botman at the airport and Botman was going back to Holland to sort a few things out or whatever. I think they've already done all of the uh, the media and I think they're just going to release it on the Friday, mate. So I think you're, you're totally right. Uh, we've got Toppy in the comments. How you doing, bud? What's your opinion on Miggy Almiron? Ooh. It's a funny woman, Miggy. I, I love his endeavour and he grafts his arse off, but he can't cross the street. Um, he can't really pass a great deal. Um, and I don't think where we're going as a club, Miggy Almiron is a player to get us there. I think we could probably sign better. And I think uh, and I think Emma mentioned it in the comments before, if we can get someone like a DRB in, and then you've got Fraser there, there's no room for Miggy, in my opinion. You know, as much as he grafts, yeah, great, you know, 
but I think we could sell him on. He's a sellable asset. We get a bit of money for him, you know, and then, and then look to upgrade. You know, it sounds a bit harsh, me, but that's kind of what I think. Uh, what about the ITK saying that Botman is a get out clause if we don't get the Champions League? Do you know, even if he does, Mark, you know, he's a really sought after player. Um, so th these are kind of normal things that you have in contracts. I mean, the, the problem with the ITK guys is, and I've got a good mate I've, I've grown up with who's one, and he's, he's a lovely bloke, you know, he gets a lot of shit, but he's chosen to do the ITK thing. I would never do it. We've said on the channel, we've made a stance that we're never going to do it. Even if I you know, knew exactly what was going on, I wouldn't come on and do it because football is so volatile and deals can change in a blink of an eye, and I wouldn't put myself in that situation. And if Botman has got that clause, we don't need to know about that. Don't... don't Put that in, in the fans' mind to start with. Just, just enjoy the lad playing for us. You know, we might be in the Champions League in the next two or three years, and then that clause won't matter a shite. So I don't see the point in, in, in the ITK guys sharing it, mate, really. But, you know, they, they, they do need to grow their presence, their channels. You know, that's the decision they've made. So, you know, good luck to them. It's not something that we're doing. You know, we're growing quite well, thanks to you lovely people. So, yeah, please continue to support our channel. No ITK is just, just crack. Uh, so we've got How and Newcastle have got it right in recruitment of Eddie Howe and Dan Ashworth unlike previous regime. You're totally right, BJT. Totally right, mate. I think it's worlds apart. It's absolutely worlds apart, mate. Chris, I think they are done, but they won't release until Friday yet. You're totally right, mate. I, I agree with that. I think that's all done and dusted. I love what the the, the club um, NUFC TV are doing as well. I love the, the interviews. The interview has got such a great style. Um, it's it just it just feels so much happier and, and, and warm and engaging now than it ever used to be under the Ashley regime. So even that's changed as well, which is brilliant. Yeah, thanks, mate. I really I really appreciate it, Mark. You have a good night, buddy. I'm going to shoot off soon as well. So be honest with you, mate. But I really appreciate you uh, you chucking that in the comments. But so I've been chatting for about 50 minutes, guys. So I think I'm pretty much uh, wrapped up. And thank you so much, everybody who stayed with us on the live feed there and all the comments as well. We really appreciate it. Um, you know, loads of subscribers we had recently. We love how you guys are loving the content. We're going to be back with a lot more. Um, I'll be back with another Rumour Has It video. It'll probably come out tomorrow morning, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and then also we'll be back with a special next week, as I've said. We've got a really special guest coming on that Adam's hooked up. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. It should be a cracking episode, that. And then uh, we'll be back with some debate shows as well before we kick off um, with another uh, start of Evermore, um, the weekly podcast will be going through the preseason games and everything else. I've just got a couple more comments on that. I'll just I'll just go through before I sign off. So we've got Keng said everything's going to be fantastic. Good manager, technical director, owners, transfers, fans, all brilliant. Absolutely love that, mate. Well said. Very positive. And Top and saying I've seen a video of him training. He looks in good shape. Absolutely. Oh, is this Miggy? Yeah, Miggy is like Forrest Gump. He runs and he runs and he runs. He's totally right, mate. But he doesn't do much else. Um, we've got Maggot saying, um, Carl, spot on, big eyes, but can't see. <laughs> You're right, mate. Big eyes, big smile, but he can't see any one of the box when he needs to cross the ball. Do you remember that was at that game at the end of the season? Was it Burnley? When he didn't cross, I thought Callum Wilson was going to absolutely murder him that day. He was unbelievable. <laughs> he had the stare he gave him. He nearly, he nearly set him on fire. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Really appreciate you coming in the comments as well, mate. But I've got to sign off now, guys. So like I said, I've been rattling on for about 52 minutes. Thank you so much, everyone who's joined us. Stick with us, as we say, through the summer. Um, we're going to have loads more content. And then obviously when the season kicks off, we'll all be back with another ever more. Yeah, Lee's counting down already. 38 days till Forest. How are Absolutely love it, mate. Uh, Toppins, yeah, seen that, watched it. Top man. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening. This is Chris signing off. Let's keep supporting that team of Coy United. We'll catch you on the next episode of Evermore. Cheers, guys. <laughs>